Welcome to the Interesting Podcast with Jedi Brian, number 30. We've hit 30, ladies and gentlemen. 30 is a nice round number. I, you know what? I don't know if 30 is significant, but uh, I'm going to pretend it is. Anyway, it's been, a, it's been a little bit of time, and the wait was definitely worth it, because this episode, I got a hold of Paul McHugh. And if you don't know his name, you've definitely seen him online before because anything from his, uh, he's got a bad robot costume from J.J. Abrams' company. You had to have seen that because it's amazing. Um, he's done a, so much cool stuff in this interview. I had such a great time talking to him. But he was in Rogue One. Like in it. Like if you watch Rogue One, you'll see Paul. And Paul is such a great dude. Um, I followed him for a while on Twitter. Now we've gone back and forth, and we finally nailed down a nailed down a little chat, which was fantastic. And he works on a ship. He was uh, he's actually in Kick Ass Two, and has some great stories about that. He's met Kathleen Kennedy. Let that sink in. He's met J.J. Abrams several times, and uh, I know you guys definitely had Rogue One questions, and I I did go for it. I did go for it. I knew he couldn't answer, but uh, for you guys, I asked the question, and Paul was a great sport about it. Uh, but yeah, I think you guys are really going to like this one. Uh, so, you know, without any further ado of me talking, enjoy the interesting podcast, episode 30, with the amazing Paul McHugh. Roll the theme song. <laughs> Hey, Brian. Hey, hey, Paul. How are you? Yeah, good, man. Good. Those things. Can you hear me? Yeah. Good. Can you hear me okay? I can. You sound perfect. Awesome. Right. I actually had to find... I was struggling to find... You know the little iPhone adapter? Yes. The, the lightning charge thing? I couldn't find it anywhere. <laughs> but yeah. Got it. Awesome. It sounds really good. I don't know if it's on my end or speakers, but it sounds great. But it cool. is... You're in Scotland. Right? Yeah. That is awesome. That's, yep. that's a place I've yeah. never been, always been on the top of my list. It's it's okay. Is it? Like, it's, there's a lot of rain. Okay. <laughs> Typical. There's a lot of wind. Sure. Um, but apart from that, if you, ca- if you come here or if you, if you catch the weather, if it's nice weather, like your best chance is, whenever I recommend, it's always August. Okay. That's, that's your best bet of, of seeing sunshine. God. And there's also the Fringe Festival in Edinburgh is awesome. Gotcha. It's it's the the largest arts festival in the world. That's awesome. So like last year, I think it was advertised as uh, three thousand acts across three hundred venues for three weeks. Wow. So it just completely takes over the city. You know, like every pub, every every venue that every venue possible sure is filled like there, there's always something going on sure absolutely a lot of, a lot of, a lot of comedy that's um, crazy. a lot of, a lot of, a lot of plays it's really good fun i've heard nothing but good things about edinburgh is that where you're at uh, i'm just north just north gotcha gotcha um so like on the map if you've got like glasgow and edinburgh i'm near stirling which is like top of the triangle so it, it takes me about 45 minutes to get to both cities Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I have friends who've traveled like all through the Highlands, and they talk about how beautiful it is. Oh, nice. And it's you, lovely up. It's lovely up that way. It really is. And you travel a lot. I love your Instagram account. You do some like super cool things. Just went uh, to, uh, yeah. You were in Iceland recently. <laughs> how was that? Yeah, that was that. Well, that was just like a a ridiculously long layover, which I was quite happy about. You know, like so. There's this. Uh, it's a fairly new budget transatlantic airline called Wow. Okay. 
um, and they're based in Iceland. It's super cheap. So I was going to Los Angeles. Okay. To go to the taping. It was it was a kind of excuse. Sure. To see friends, but you know, I entered the lottery uh, for talking, talking with Chris Hardwick. Sure. Oh, sweet. Uh, so, and it was Damon Lindelof. Oh, perfect. Uh, and and once I got once I won tickets for that, I was like, right, okay. So yeah, super budget, uh, this Icelandic mob. Um, so on the way back, it was like an eighteen-hour layover. Oh man. So I was like, so I was like, well, you know, like normally you'd be like, no way, I'm not doing that. Sure. But I was like, why not? It's like Iceland. I haven't been there before. So yeah. Really, that's pretty cool. Making the best out of that situation, because the springs that yeah. you went to, like, what was that like? That looks super the, cool. That was awesome. Um, that's called the Blue Lagoon. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a geothermal spa. Really. Um, it's well, it's it's man-made, but the water's pumped in from a nearby spring. Gotcha. Um, so it's it's kind of like just a big swimming pool. Sure. Like, yeah. um, where you put on your mud packs and you can get a massage and it's yeah, it's good fun. It was cool. It looks like otherworldly. Probably the fog looking of it. Yeah, well, because it it was like really cold. Yeah. But then once you get in the water, it's so warm and it, it, that then you get the steam. So it was yeah, it was cool. It was nice. That is so cool. I, lo- I love to travel, so when I see anything like that, I just kind of freak out. I'm like, it looks like another world. Yeah, it's cool, man. That's awesome. I saw you went to Skelly I, Michael, too. Skelly Michael? Yeah. Oh, dude. I, like, I've been there. What was it like for you? <laughs> it, is, it is an experience. Right? It's, it's, a, it's an adventure. It's, it's a journey getting there. Oh, for real. Um, like, I mean, there's I think there's like about a dozen fishing boats that take you out. Yep. That can, that can hold about a dozen people at a time, and because it's, you know, it's a, a world heritage site, you know, it's to cut down on the numbers. Like they're, they're only allowed so many people on the island per right. day. But yeah, like you, you can book your, your journey, like book your boat, but because of where it is, you know, it's, it takes about an hour, just over an hour, an hour and fifteen minutes, I think it is, on the boat to get yeah. there. Um, and it's not smooth sailing. <laughs> well, well, that's it, right? I mean. Um, it really depends on the weather if you get to go or not. Sure, I've heard if it rains, they don't go at all. It's yeah. Well, I I got lucky. Like I got very lucky. Yeah. Um, the boat that I booked on wasn't able to go out five days previous. Wow. And the forecast the following day was bad for like an, another week. But yeah, when I woke up and opened the curtains, it was like beautiful sunshine, no wind flat sea it was just very lucky oh man were you able to book ahead yeah like so yeah you you need to book ahead sure like um when did i i think it was about two weeks i booked mine two weeks beforehand gotcha i went it was last year in june and i wasn't able to book ahead but i was one of those people oh, really? that like um i went I gave myself three days because I, I toured basically all of Ireland. We did like 1,300 miles in like a week and a half. and uh, Awesome. Yeah, oh, it was amazing. Um, and so I got there on Saturday morning, and the boats were already leaving, and I talked to one of the guides, and he said, tomorrow uh, it probably isn't going to be that busy, so if you want, at like 7.30 in the morning, wait by that gate. And if there's an empty spot, because there's usually cancellations, you can get on. Ah, sweet. And I got very, very lucky. And uh, they had an open spot for me. Awesome. And the day that I went, the weather wasn't super perfect. There was a lot of fog coming through, which right, okay. sort of added to the experience. Because once you you know, go up the 300-plus steps and, yep. and you get to the top, for like 20 minutes up there, you couldn't see anything. Because it was all completely covered in fog, so it literally uh, felt like another planet. Yeah, yeah, it was bonkers. But it's it's. I mean, like it's you so said, cool, it's, right? Yeah, really. I mean, it's 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 a heck of an experience. It is. It's n- like nothing else. It's it's such yeah. a and the fact that it's in the middle of the ocean, like ten miles off the coast. Yeah. It's it's unlike anything else. But I really, really, really enjoyed it. Like when they were when they were choosing, 
you know, there was like rumors of uh, of locations that that they were kind of choosing for right uh, the Force Awakens, mm-hmm. and obviously being Scottish, I was like, oh, you know, there was a rumor like in the paper of you know they, they were going to choose Scotland. Sure. And it was like, oh yeah, that'd be amazing. Um, and I was kind of disappointed when when it didn't work out. Right. But then they couldn't have chosen like if it was Skellig Michael right. like if that was you know then they couldn't have chosen anywhere better like it was so cool sure and that's the other really cool thing with a lot of Star Wars sets is like when they film it in actual locations as opposed to like sound stages you can go and like like your picture yeah. you can, you're can you standing where Luke Skywalker stood yeah it's pretty great that you can do something yeah. like that I have a I have friends who are in the 501st in Rebel Legion in Ireland and they actually found the filming location in Dingle while, while they were filming and saw like the huts that they built oh that's cool yeah very very neat I took it I took it the following day after Skelly Michael uh, well I'd hired a car and I, I took a trip um, to Dingle like oh, this was you know after the film had been released and stuff so they, sure. um, in fact they weren't even filming uh, Last Jedi Gotcha. But just just to be there, I was like, so I'm going to be going back yeah. <laughs> next year. Sure. Um, there's a bunch of us like from the Jedi News. I think there's going to be about half a dozen of us going. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously we're going to wait until the last Joy- Je- the last Jedi's out as well. Right. So that we're kind of hoping that the locals will then be able to talk more about it. Right. Right like you know what i mean sure and that way you'll have like visual references to be like oh this was yeah as opposed to kind of guessing like i went well i went to dingle golf club like that's the nearest like if you were going to drive park your car at dingle golf club and then to walk to where they built the set it's like another like 500 600 meters gotcha and it's like right up on the cliff face right I'm so excited. But yeah, yeah. I'm so excited. I think the Last Jedi is going to be great. What do you think of the teaser? It was good. Yeah, it was good. I mean, you know, it, just enough. Exactly. Yeah. So I, they didn't I, really I like that. Yeah, like, I, well, kind of like that. Like, I, I, I don't want to know. I agree. I, do, I, I don't want to know the story before going in. Sure. So like, with the Force Awakens, like, I completely avoided all trailers, like. My first trailer experience was at Celebration Anaheim really? for the Chewy were the Chewy were home. Yeah. That was the first trailer trailer I watched. Wow, that's pretty. That's impressive, especially nowadays. Like the way the internet is, things are yeah. everywhere. It's like, hard to avoid. But that that was like total a total conscious effort. Sure, sure. And that was <laughs> like I watched. I think I watched that trailer like once or twice more afterwards. But that was it. Well, it's gotta be a little bit easier avoiding spoilers because you 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 work on a ship yeah how yeah. Is, what is that like um it sounds like hard work <laughs> it, it's yeah so like uh, i look after deep sea divers oh cool um uh, a life support technician that's amazing so um you know like hyperbaric chambers yes so like the the divers live in there for a maximum of 28 days Wow, and I'm on the outside of the chambers, just monitoring. Uh, well, basically monitoring the the row two level. Sure. So what, whatever depth they're at, give them the right percent of O2. Wow. Um, but I mean that yeah. So like from O2 to cups of tea, just sure. if you can imagine <laughs> living in like an enclosed space, everything that you need has to be supplied. So that's where right. I come in. Wow, that kind of reminds me. Did you see Alien Covenant? I did. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of like Walter just checking on all the pods. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Similar. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I've never even heard of that. <laughs> yeah. Dude. It's, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's you know you work. Uh, 28 days, 12 hours a day, seven days a week. Right. Um, but I mean, I'll be honest with you. The only reason I like the job is because I get a month off. You know, it's like month on, month off. Yeah, of course, of course. So you know, I obviously I prefer the yeah. <laughs> I prefer the month I prefer the month of off course. so I can go traveling and stuff like that. Of course, of course. That's the thing. Is like a lot of people. You know, it's what is it? 
work to pay bills or pay bills to work or, or yeah, work uh, to live kind uh, of thing. Work to live. Yeah, yeah I work to live. That's yeah. so cool. I'm about it. I I love traveling and everything like that. And that's interesting. That's that's a cool story. Not a lot of people have that kind of line of work. There's worse things yeah, to it's, do. <laughs> it's different. I mean, to be honest, I mean, the North Sea industry just now is in a pretty bad shape. Sure. Uh, for the last like 15, 16 years, it's been constant. You know, like month on month off. Really. But I mean, I haven't worked for like the last four months now, so. Sure. Hopefully, hopefully something picks up. Right on, right on. And you go. To, are there a lot of cons over there? Because I know you go to a lot of conventions. I do as well. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There's a few. Yeah. There's a few. Like so, over over in the UK, there's like two main companies, uh, Showmasters, okay. who do London Film Comic Con and Collector Mania. Okay. Um. And MCM. So MCM was just recently like they had Donnie Yen. Yes. That was so that that was the last one I went to. Gotcha. And that one's that one's big, I'm sure, because London's massive. That yeah, that's that was big, yeah. I just went to London for the first time last year as well, and I was blown away by the size of it. I don't know why. Maybe because right. I'm American, I was like, oh, you know, things are giant in America, so we'll go to the UK. And because it's geographically smaller, the place will be uh-huh. smaller. And I was so wrong. <laughs> yeah, I mean, L- London's. Up. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, <laughs> it's <laughs> like, huge. Yeah. I was like, well, yeah. granted, they've had like hundreds of years to grow, <laughs> so yeah. it makes sense. But it was massive, massive. What did you What did you think? Where did Where did you go? I went to, in London, we stayed in Hammersmith which is like right off the tube, like outskirts of London. But we did, I mean, all the touristy stuff. You know, we had to go to the London Eye just to see yep. everything. We did. I haven't done that yet, actually. It's very <laughs> cool. You see all of it. Um, yeah, yeah I, I recommend that. It's super cool. Then we did the uh, Wax Museum because I have the Star Wars section. All right. So you have to, yep. you know. Yeah, um, yeah. Took the tube everywhere. Yeah. Um, we went to so hang on June was was this round about celebration time then it was no. right that... after right okay yeah I was oh man so many people like I had to go to Canary Wharf you know like, like so so did you stay after celebration to to tour around or did you go home and come back again I went and actually no it was two weeks before celebration I wasn't able to make it to celebration because I booked the trip oh really before I knew celebrations dates. Uh, I know. No I so know. close. So close. And it was funny because uh, all my friends that went to dude. celebration, they were taking pictures at Canary Wharf, and I was like, I did that two weeks ago. <laughs> 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 it was the only thing that I had on them. How was th- how was that? You were there, right, at Celebration London? Yeah. Did you see Ben it, Mendelsohn? Because Ben uh, Mendelsohn yeah, like, came was, out as Krennic. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I went to that panel. Oh, it's so cool. I, having yeah. been, you've been to Celebration in the states and over there. What what is the differences between that? You don't need to queue, like you don't need to wait in line overnight. Really? To to get into like the big panels. Wow. Like that was the same. That was the same for Germany. So my first one was Essen. Oh, cool. So that that was like the year before Anaheim. Right. Um. In fact, that was the first one that Kathy Kennedy had taken over. Like, you know what I mean? So that yeah. that was that sort of lead up. So yeah, it was Essen, Anaheim, London, Orlando, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I've done those four. So yeah, like, um, Anaheim, I managed to get a VIP badge. Oh, right. So on. I didn't need. So I, I didn't need to wait in line. Sure. So I was kind of spoiled. Yeah. In fact, I had a VIP for I had a VIP for Essen as well, actually. Right on. So, and then London, I didn't, but I still like. So for London, like for the Rogue One panel, for example, like the the big panel of that day. Sure. I got I got up at. I think I got up at five, so I was in line for six. Gotcha. And you and you get in, you got a wristband, and there was no problem. Wow. So. Orlando there yeah. it kind of took me by surprise that like if you wanted to get into the big panel of the day you had to be in line at like 6pm the previous night sort of thing oh yeah or or 8pm 9pm but that kind of caught me off guard sure because I'm sure size wise 
I mean, I think Orlando's like I haven't been to Anaheim, but Orlando is bonkers. There's so many oh. people. We yeah. I had two friends with me and we our big thing was the fortieth panel. We're like, we have yep. to get into the fortieth. I don't know what they have planned, but you're gonna want to be in this room. We got into line at two PM the previous day and we were I think a hundred it was like a hundred and sixtieth in line. But we had to wait, wow. you know, almost twenty four hours. <laughs> luckily That's unbelievable. Luckily it paid off because we were in the fifth row right in front of John Williams. Oh, dude, so jealous. Yeah, yeah I could, dude. So it, jealous. That, that panel, whoever orchestrated that is a genius. Like, to yeah. have all these people and George Lucas talking long form, and then a Carrie Fisher tribute. So you're, like, really hyped, and yeah. then you're crying, and then more, and then John amazing. Williams. Just yeah, incredible. But uh, do you do you have a favorite so far, having I, been I, the last four? I kicked I kick myself. I was in the bar. Uh-huh. Um just trying to think what what what, what, what was it? it was the Hyatt oh, okay. uh, so yeah I was sort of drinking in the bar and I was about to leave at like 10 p.m. Mm-hmm. before the 40th panel oh. so that was my plan like um, and at round about that time like Pablo and all the Star Wars show folk came in oh, that's awesome. so you know then you're sort of once you're in that company. Of course. You know, I just totally lost track of time. Sure. Next thing I knew, next thing I knew, it's like two a.m. Right. So I was like, oh shit! Like I better go and like you know. Sure. So I went back, got changed. So by the time I was in line, it was like three a.m. or something. God. Um, crashed out for a few hours, waiting out because well, by that point we couldn't get into the. <laughs> right. We couldn't get we're, like we're told to stay outside. Yeah, because they closed even the doors let, at like midnight. Yeah, which I didn't know anything about that either. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> of course. So yeah. Uh, Did you make it in? Well, waited in line. Waited in the. Managed to get a wristband. So excited to get a wristband. Sure. Only to just only to discover it was for the overflow. Gotcha. It was, it was to watch the stream. Of course. I was gutted. Ah, oh, man. I was gutted. <laughs> but it's, it's, my own, it's my own fault. Sure, sure. It's Next time. <laughs> once, once, you, once, once I started drinking, that was it. Right, right. And you had good that, company. That so was my, that's a good reason. That was that was my mistake. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have went to the bar. Sure. <laughs> uh, having been to the last four, do you have a favorite? Though I know you got VIP badges, so I'm sure that that helps a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I've got to say the first one. I've got to say Essen. Really? Oh uh, yeah. What was the big thing at Essen? Because Rogue One was London. Uh, episode seven uh, was the... Anaheim. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Was it an anniversary? Just oh, a celebration. Yes. No, it was. It was uh, Return of the Jedi. Gotcha. Um. Yeah, it was that anniversary. Gotcha. But, I mean, so the reason I'm saying that is, is Essen. So it was obviously it was my first one, right? First celebration, and just the the friendships that I've made, and who I'm still friends with now. Sure. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Like that, 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 that. I mean, that's what celebrations are all about, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. You know, go absolutely. along. And and this wasn't people who you know like you're following twitter or stuff like that this is just random right uh you know like um have you darth elvis have you, have oh, you yeah. heard of darth, darth elvis in the oh, sorry yes. so greg um we we're just again sat, sat at the bar of course um and greg was sat with uh his friend john john laurie mm-hmm. um and i just heard the scottish accent like so it's like oh how you doing? My name's Greg. My name's Paul. Blah blah blah. I got talking. It's like oh, um, so we, we just clicked. Like we just had that sort of Scottish connection. Sure. So you know, we sort of sat drinking all night. And Greg was like, I hadn't heard of Darth Elvis before that. Right. So he was sort of showing me some video clips, uh, and that was my first time cosplaying. So I I took over the bad robot costume oh yes uh so yeah first celebration first time cosplaying meeting up with a bunch of cool dudes sure it was good fun 
that was a big thing for this last one for me. I met so many people just like hanging out in line and we're all still friends and talk all the time. Yeah. And it's one thing, something about Star Wars, it's like when you go there to celebrate something that everybody loves and it's very specific as opposed to like a full on Comic Con. When it's all Star yeah. Wars, it's like kindred spirits. Absolutely. It's super, super cool. Yeah. Speaking of super cool, you've got a BB-8 kilt. A BB-8, yeah. How did Kitty, how did uh, that come to be? Because I love it. Um, when Ashley released her BB-8 dress, like the A-line dress. Yes. I was like, I want that looks awesome. I want a kilt <laughs> version. Simple as that. Sure. <laughs> Um, and actually, I got to speak to Ashley um, in Orlando. Right on. Uh, How nice is she? And and I was wearing. Oh, she's awesome! Like she's so sweet. She is. Um, and I was wearing the BB-8 kilt at the time, so I was like, "Oh, <laughs> Ashley, like perfect. This is like down to you. Like you inspired me to to have this made." And it's even cooler because you're Scottish. It's like it's like well, heritage with fandom. It's, it's yeah. It's so cool. So. Kate, yeah, Katie, Katie Elhoffer, Elhoffer Design. She uh, yeah, she's I, I amazing. Pitched the idea, pitched the idea to her, and she was like, "Yep, no problem." That's so cool. So that's, and I didn't like have any idea of what it wanted to look like. I just knew I wanted a BB-8 kilt, sure, like with with vest, and she just like went, "Here's a sketch. What do you think?" And I was like, "That's awesome." go for it right i've got the beep i've got the bb8 kilt and i've now got a k2so and an r2d2 oh i haven't seen the k2 <laughs> one i've seen the r2 i haven't seen your k2 one k2 one i had that on for the for rogue one what? yeah i'm gonna I had have to find pictures it's so like on the back of the vest it's just like dark gray uh-huh like it like the r2d2 one and the bb8 one uh kind of looks more like the droids right. whereas the k2so it's basically just plain gray right like a dark a dark gunmetal gray sort of thing <laughs> like k2 but on the, uh, yeah but like on on the back of the vest it's got the o2 oh sweet um and on the kill oh yeah so i'm on my so like i wear a black shirt Mm -hmm. So I, I stitched the Imperial Cogs on my arms oh, awesome. to look to look like him, and then I was like, "Well, hang on, it looks too Imperial." Like I know, like you know what I mean. Sure. So it was like, "That's nah, too you know, I need to balance it up a little." Sure. So on the so on the front of the kilt, there's the uh, Rebel logo. That's so cool. So it's it's a bit of it's a bit of both, you know. Sure. Like 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 K two himself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you're you're a big droid fan. What did you think of K two? Because he's so different. Than he's any droid so we good. Know. <laughs> I love the attitude. Oh, like, for real. It's it was refreshing. Mm -hmm. Like to have like that. I would imagine, like personality wise, I think R two D two is very similar to that. Sure, very feisty. You know, very, like, you know. speaks his mind, fight, yeah, exactly. But you actually hear it with K2 rather than just beeps and whistles. Right. You know what I mean? But that's what K2 says, I imagine R2's dialogue to be along those lines. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and Alan Tudyk is just fantastic. And I love that yep. a lot of K2's dialogue was just, like, improv on set. Such a, ta such a talented guy. Absolutely. Have you met him, or uh, how, how many droids have you met? I gotta ask. <laughs> well, Kenny. Oh, met Kenny. Dude. Met Kenny. Where did I see Kenny first? That was at Celebration. That's one I regret. No, never totally. Meeting. That was at Lon London Film and Comic Con. Oh, really? So yeah, I think I've I think I've seen Kenny three times. I've seen so him at London cool. Film and Comic Con twice and at Celebration. He seems so nice. Yeah. Have you met Anthony Daniels? So, yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Right on. Um, Several times, um, celebrate, yeah, twice at celebration. That's awesome. And yeah, twice at celebration. I was going to say London Film and Comic, but no, he wasn't there. And then you Who was it? Oh, Carrie, that was it. Carrie went to London Film and Comic Con as well. As they were filming The Force Awakens, oh. they they uh, they managed to get her along. Did you? I mean, you had to have met Brian Herring by now. I haven't actually. No. Really? 
Um, he was he was meant so at MCM uh-huh. like the con just like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, I only went on the Friday. Okay. And Brian Brian was meant to be there, but he I don't know he pulled out like the previous day or something, yeah, like yeah. just for the Friday. I think he was there like due to work commitments. Right. So he was there on the Saturday and Sunday, but I only had a Friday ticket, so oh. I I missed out on that one. Next time. Next time. He's super yeah. nice. He's one I've met two or three times. And he's he's great. He's got great stories. Cool. I remember we I met the first time I met him was like Supercon last year, which is in Miami. Uh it's a really big one here in Florida. And he like right. he's like, I can't say anything, but I can tell you Han Solo's gonna be great. Like, awesome. Oh, sweet. <laughs> He's super cool. <laughs> and speaking of awesome robots, your bad robot costume is so cool looking. How hot oh, does it get? <laughs> it's hot. What's it's it hot. what's it made of? Um foam. Really? Okay. That's cool. Yeah, foam foam with uh red P V C wrap around it. Gotcha. How do you how do you so see? It's, it's not too heavy, you know? Sure. How do you see out of it? Like where's your where's your eyes at in it? <laughs> the the eye is the bad robot's mouth. Oh, uh, Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That's cool. Because I actually, before I found you online, I'd seen your bad robot, like, everywhere. Oh, uh, did you? I, absolutely. I mean, it's it's so cool. It's so well done. And it's so iconic. And well, now with JJ in charge of Star Wars. Well, I mean, that was the whole reason I wanted to do it. Well, I tell a lie, actually. Sure. <laughs> I, first, I first had the idea to do it for the finale of Lost. Oh, yes. In, in 2010 mm-hmm. the big big lost fan and through lost that got me hooked on bad robot sure you know so after when lost ended i then watched alias and fringe like was on at the same time as well right um and then the movies that they started doing as well um mm-hmm. so yeah like but it was really lost that got me into it like lost introduced me to jj sure sure um so yeah, like all my, my friends had a big like finale party in in LA, and I had the idea. It was a picture on Deviant Art actually. Really? It was whoever, and I don't know the name of the artist, mm-hmm. but someone posted a picture of uh, the bad robot, but with the head off, and JJ was inside it. So it's like bad robot. <laughs> bad robot but with jj's head sure. like as a costume and i was like huh i wonder if anyone's so i then went online like bad robot cosplay bad robot costume and no one had done it before sure so i was like is this possible like why has no one done it sure like that was my first like why not absolutely um so then yeah got in touch with a, a couple of friends and like they so I didn't build it. Right. Like they built it. Sure. Um, but I sort of pitched the idea. Right. And they're like, "Yeah, that that, that could work." It's, and and luckily it did. It for sure. And with a costume like that, it's one thing to make it; it's another thing to wear it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, wearing it's so much fun. Sure, I can. Im- like, when would you expect to see it, Mad it, Robot? It, it, it gets a good response, you know. Sure. Speaking of good responses, I've heard you uh, you may have met a certain prominent woman because of this costume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need to hear this um, story. Tell me, Paul, you met Kathleen Kennedy. So the first <laughs> the first time I wore the costume mm-hmm. was, was at Essen. Perfect. Um, so I'd worn the costume to... Yeah, so I put the costume on. In fact, I went round with Greg, actually. So I got talking to Greg the night before. Right on. So Greg Greg was wearing his Darth Elvis. And I was like, oh, dude, like, would you mind giving me a hand, like, getting into it? Like, once a minute, I'm fine. Right. But would you mind, like, you know, help, helping me out? And he's like, yep, no worries. So Greg gave me a hand, got it on, went into the con, wore it for about four hours, had a photo op with Mark Hamill, and Carrie Fisher. Perfect. Um, and I was coming out. Yeah, so I was coming out. I was going back to the hotel, which was like right opposite the convention. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was taking. I had to take it off for Carrie's panel. Right. So 
I was I was in a rush going back. <laughs> so so I'm, so I'm going back to the hotel, and like two policemen stopped me to take pictures with me at the hotel awesome. at the front door of the hotel. So and then like a sort of little crowd gathered. So everyone's wanting pictures and stuff. Of course. Um, so I was like, all oh, right. So I sort of managed to wad- waddle my way like towards the uh, the hotel doors, and this guy came up to me and he's like, "Oh, um, I know someone who'd really like a picture taken with you. Uh, can you wait here a couple of minutes?" I'm like, "Oh, dude, you know, like I'm in a bit of a rush. Sure. Like I need to get off. Like I need to like get off and have a shower so that I can make Carrie's panel. That's like you know starting soon." Sure. He was like, oh, uh, I, I work for Lucasfilm. Would, would, you, would, would you be able to hang on just a couple of minutes? Oh, I was like, oh, that's the magic word. I know. <laughs> right, okay, <laughs> right? So I was of like, course. yep, yeah, okay, no, no problem. Go for it. Right. And then, and then out, comes, <laughs> out comes Kathy Kennedy oh with, my her, God. with her entourage. Like, and it, it was unbelievable dude like i had to, <laughs> obviously like when the guy says look at some you know you sort of think oh cool that's you know someone from look at some wants a picture or whatever blah 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 right you don't expect it to be kathy kenny oh, for like, sure <laughs> you, you know what i mean for sure. you think it's gonna be some more like tech people from lucasfilm You're like oh yeah cool. i mean whoever yeah, yeah. You think it's going to be more Lucasfilm just, employees, not the mother of Star like, Wars? <laughs> yeah, like Matt Martin or Pablo or someone like exactly. that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, or Chris. Exactly. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, Agreed. I never... <laughs> like, but no, like, so that kind of blew me away. I mean, for sure. It's, it's Kathleen Kennedy. And as, it, to get a picture and, and as it turns out, he, so here's like a, it was like a spooky meeting, spooky coincidence, like a fate type thing. Mm-hmm. So the guy who was the guy who took our pictures for Lucasfilm, mm-hmm. uh, his name is Mickey Capoferri. Sweet. So Mickey is now the producer of the Star Wars show. Wow. Unbeknown to me, I had backed his Kickstarter oh. like eighteen months before. Like eighteen months before. Uh, He's got like another little production company called Might. Uh, was it the Mighty Treehouse? Sweet. So there's like Mickey and uh, VFX artist who works at Bad Robot, Brandon Fayette. Mm-hmm. They pitched this Kickstarter. It was like a little thirty second tease, like an animated movie called Dome, which is basically it's like a cross between Wally and ET. Oh, sweet. Like a, a cute little robot is cleaning the windows falls down as the mothership leaves and he, like he's stranded sort of thing gotcha so anyway so after like a few about a month after celebration like mickey had sent the picture to brandon now i had like i've i had met brandon at the bad robot art show at gallery 88 previous to this as well so I, I got introduced to Brandon, and this was round about the time that I was sketching up the Bad Robot costume. Right. So Brandon actually designed Bad Robot. Like, the, the little red robot that we know and love, Brandon came up with that. Like, he designed it. Wow. So I was like, oh, dude, like, I'm actually making this costume. Like, what do you think? Sure. So he's like, oh, that's awesome. Like, when it's done, send me pictures. Here's my email. So then when Mickey took a picture and sent it to Brandon, Brandon's like, oh, that's Paul. He backed our Kickstarter. So it was like this funny yeah. little, like... Full circle. That's so cool. Full, yeah. It was weird. Yeah. <laughs> it was weird. But yeah, uh, Kath, Kathy, was, Kathy was awesome. Dude. Dude, you, you met Kathleen Kennedy. That is like... And the other thing is yeah. you met her, like, in real life. You well, know, it's what... That was... I mean, it's... Kathy asked me for a picture. Like yeah. normally you would ask Kathy, right? Absolutely. Normally you would ask Kathy. That's... Oh, in fact, after Rogue One, well, it was when Rogue One, when the PR for that was coming out, mm-hmm. Kathy's assistant at the time, so the, the guy who actually asked me if I would wait a couple of minutes right. was uh, John Schwartz. Oh, what? So he, he was Kathy's assistant at the time. 
who then went on to be like producer of Rogue One. Yeah, he's super so, cool. So his when I asked for like so we got the pictures and all that, and I was like, oh, like obviously, and I'm in the costume. So, so I said to John, you know, would it be possible? to get a signature or you know like i'm sort of pushing my luck here like thanks sure. for the picture but sure. you know like would you be able to sign something and he was like yep so he went into his like messenger bag and pulled out his so it's like a lucasfilm headed piece of paper with his name at the bottom that kathy signed what and it was only when i think it was it might have been the star wars show or it might have just been like a youtube video uh-huh. where he's like sat with gareth and they're sort of talking about rogue one I was like, huh, I recognize you. Yeah. <laughs> John Schwartz. So then so I went and got the, the autograph. I was like, yeah, hey, the name matches up. Okay, I'll see how this works. Sure. I met him, uh, John Schwartz, actually getting into the 501st Bash at Celebration Orlando. Oh, was he? Was he there? He was. He, uh, he was with the Star Wars show people, actually. I got to hang out with Anthony and Andy, Scott. Uh, John Schwartz, Daniel Kennedy. Ah. They like, I went to, because you know it was at the Hyatt. Where like yeah, everyone I was, I was, was there. So I was gonna I go. Was there. Where are you? Oh, dude, we like walked circles yeah. around each other. <laughs> <laughs> I, so we walked into the Hyatt, going to the Bash, and I was like, let's just go to the bar for a little bit. When you walk in and go to the left, and so yep, yep. walked up to the bar, and there's the whole Star Wars show and Kyle Newman just hanging okay. out. And I was like, okay. well, I'm gonna hang out here for a while. I got talk. I, so yeah, I was in the Bash as well. I saw Andy and I saw Mickey. I didn't see anyone else though. I got here's a here's a funny story. I got so close to getting VIP wristbands for the bash. Oh. But my conscience got in the way. <laughs> but in like not the not the t- uh, typical way. So I had tickets beforehand, right? I'm in the 501st yep. and the Rebel Legion and all that. And so I had a wristband but I had a jacket on. So I was hanging out with Anthony and Andy and we were all just hanging out for probably close to an hour just at the bar. And they're like, yeah. we're going to go to the bash. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, let's go. And they went to the entrance, and they wouldn't let them in because they didn't have wristbands. So they're like, okay, that's weird. So they went around the back, and Scott Will, who's the guy in charge of the whole bash, he's like, oh, these are Lucasfilm people. And he's, he recognized John and Andy and Anthony, and he passed out VIP wristbands to everyone. I didn't know there was a difference. Uh, so I was like, okay. he's like, do you need one? I was like, no, no, no. I, I yeah, that's that right. There was like that little VIP section inside, wasn't it? Yes. And so yep. they asked me, yep. they're just passing them out. They're like, do you need one? I was like, oh, no, no, I got one. And I didn't know that they were passing out VIPs. Uh, and I had a regular. So close. <laughs> so close. We got to the VIP section, and the guard is just checking all the wristbands, and mine's a different color. He's like, sorry, man. I was like, no. Oh, so dude. close. So close. Have you met J.J. Abrams yet? Yeah. Have you um, met J.J. Abrams? While wearing the costume. What? <laughs> oh, you got to tell me yeah. what happened. How'd In fact, I met, JJ. I met J.J. a couple of times. What? Um, so this was at the time he was launching the book. Okay. You know, the, the book called S? Yes. The Ship of, Ship of Thesis? Mm-hmm. Um, so he was doing the launch at Waterstones at Piccadilly. Sweet. Um, so I got in touch with Waterstones, sent him an email with a picture of the costume saying, you know, like, I would love to meet JJ wearing this. Like, I know it's a bit bizarre, it's a bit out there, yeah. but, like, would that be cool, like, if I turned up wearing that? Right. And they were they were so accommodating. They were like, yes, love it, please bring it. So cool. That would be so cool. So, um... Yeah, met up with a couple of friends. We were sort of basically first in, like my friend was first in line. Mm-hmm. So by the time I got there, went to like I went to a, I rented a room at a hostel, like a two minute walk away, sure. just so I could put the costume on and then like you know what I mean. Right. So put the costume on. Um, got to the front of the line. So. <laughs> so yeah, basically when JT came. So I stood on the street at Piccadilly, like oh, for perfect. for for like about three hours, I think it was. Oh man! So, like, obviously that attracted some attention. Of course. Um. You were like the herald. But yeah, what, once 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 we got inside, um. Uh, JJ came out, 
and he was you know talking to his people or whatever talking to the to the staff mm-hmm. and then he sort of as he turned round to to look at the crowds like there's me first in line sort of thing beautiful and as he turned around he was taking a drink of water like out of a bottle uh-huh. so like there's me with a slushy cup so when i saw him drinking and looking at me i sort of then took a drink of my slushy <laughs> and he sort of did that sort of like it was like a double take and almost <laughs> spurt out his water it was like yeah and then he just came over and we, we chatted for about five minutes oh that's so it was, cool it was awesome yeah dude yeah if you if you dig back a couple of years on instagram it's it's there dude that is so cool oh i'll, I'll send it to you i'll post it yes do that because that's i'll, a... I'll send I'll, I'll send you i'll send you a link that is amazing and how cool is it that like the people that we like super admire in, in these realms are also really cool because that's the big fear of like meeting your heroes oh jg is so cool like he's he's like he's a, oh, in fact i've met jg three times actually thinking about it so that was yeah but anyway it's like he's like jg's a fan himself right like you know like he's he's a kindred spirit like he he gets it sure in fact the day i met him you know remember the first image that they released with uh lee towersley and all, oliver steeples and kathy and r2 yes the that first image from so i met him that day that star wars posted that picture really i re- always rem- always remember that yeah so yeah that was that day that is crazy speaking of uh of hot costumes we have another connection in uh chris stevens you have an elo asty mask Oh yeah, yeah. I know the guy who made that. <laughs> All right, yeah. Yeah, cool. you had me thinking there. I was like, hang on, how does? Oh yeah, Aluasti. Yeah. yeah. Yep. How how hot is it? How hot is yours? I have a nine numb mask made by him, and it's full latex, and it's right. Okay. Like I did a I did a troop once. There was um, a kid in West Palm Beach, Florida, who was with the Make a Wish, and his wish was to be a Jedi. And we did this whole thing with the West Palm Beach Police Department where he, like, saved the city. And oh, no, I was – it's one of the best experiences of my life. It, you got to find it online somewhere. And That um, is amazing. He went through, like, Jedi training and, like, used the Force to lift up rocks. And then R2 shows up, and he's like, we need help saving the mayor. And he, like, went and fought Darth Vader. And it was amazing. Oh. Amazing. And I was – You need uh, to send me that link. Absolutely. I need to see that. I, I had my um I took my Sullustin mask and made a Jedi out of it, so he's like meeting an alien Jedi and it's cool and at the that end of awesome. it in Florida with the humidity, I like oh. by the time I took it off it was like <laughs> dude it was like the Little Mermaid when she comes out of the ocean but like gross and sweat yeah. just oh yeah. it's disgusting but so hot but worth it but it's worth it though right absolutely like you you don't mind. You don't mind the sweat, you don't mind the warmth because, you know, yeah, no, I get it, man. Yeah. I get it. That, that is so cool. That is so cool. And you've got Elo Asti. Yeah. Super cool. How do you, do you have anything for uh, airflow at all? Because you're in an X-Wing suit. No. No, nothing. Nothing. Oh, the things we suffer for. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. In fact, I've, with Chris, um, when he makes an Admiral Radis, I want to get my hands on that. Oh, same. How great was Radis? Yeah. This so is cool. this is actually the perfect segue. You were in <laughs> Rogue One. Yeah. Dude, you made it. You did every fanboy's dream. Stood stood beside Radis. You did. <laughs> that, that, that's why I want the mask to be. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Get a rebel. Get a rebel MP costume and then stand yeah. behind the mask and be like, look. Yeah. <laughs> so okay how was yeah. that you're you're a rebel you are a real I'm, rebel I'm amazing yeah dude you can, wa- <laughs> yeah. you can watch rogue one and see yourself like that is that is literally the dream it's yeah it was such a fun day was it was it one day of shooting so yeah that was that was the day before celebration london really <laughs> yeah it was uh part of the reshoots sure so i i was i was at home mm-hmm. 
pack, packing my bag for celebration, like digging out, you know, what was wanting signed and getting costumes ready and sure. all the. In fact, it was my kilt actually. I was just wearing my kilt, <laughs> so I was getting the kilt, ki- getting the kilt ready, um, getting my posters and things together. When I got the email, like, "Are you available for Los Alamos tomorrow?" Yeah, couldn't hit reply yes quick enough. <laughs> uh, in fact, actually, I, I I had to do. I was offshore. I got a similar email two weeks beforehand mm-hmm. when I was when I was at sea, and that was for three days filming. Wow! But because I was at sea, right? You know, it sort of broke my broke my heart to say no. Oh. Like I I can't do it. I'm not available. Can't do it. Sure. And that was me thinking, oh, I've lost my chance. That was it. Sure. Uh, so yeah, day be- uh, two days before celebration. This is on the Wednesday night at about four p.m. Are you available for Los Alamos? Yes. Dude. I got the I got the confirmation email at uh, it was about eight p.m. Mm-hmm. That night on the Wednesday night, uh, and at that point, I was like, oh, right, okay. They want me to be at Pinewood for six a.m. Sure. Like you best get moving. <laughs> how am I, like how am I going to do it? Like at that point, I'm like, wait, hey, oh, like it was too late to get a plane, too late to get a train. Right. So I went to the, I went to the nearest airport, hired a car, and drove down through the night. Yes. That you is know, incredible. Take taking on the Red Bull. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, stopping off every every so often and stuff, taking breaks. Right. Right. Um. So. By the time, like, I got there about half past five. Okay. I got there half an hour to go. Perfect. Um, yeah, went in, checked in. Uh, first thing you do is hand over your phone. Right, of course. Uh, of course. <laughs> uh, hand over your phone, you get, like, a little uh, ticket sort of thing. Okay. A little number. Like, stash that away. I can put that in my sock. Right. Um, so, yeah... I mean, at, at this point, I still didn't know what costume right. I was going to be wearing, or, or what I was doing, or what the scene was. Didn't have any idea. Sure. All I knew, all I knew was Rogue One. So, turn up, and they're like, "Right, okay, name, okay, here's your 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 shit, here's your piece of paper." Mm-hmm. Uh, and at the top says Reb costume Rebel MP. So I was like, "Huh, Rebel MP, okay." Get in line for hair and makeup. Um, they put uh, sideburns on me. Perfect. Like that sort of seventies. Yeah. yeah. Like you know what I mean? Sure, it's got to line up. It's got exactly. So they put big long sideburns on me. Um. And then went through, and then that then that's when I was handed the costume, and <laughs> and I. Couldn't have, it, it was amazing. <laughs> so I mean, at that point, you know, there were people who'd obviously had a, an earlier hull time, right? And they were all in costume. And they're all wandering around, and in my brain, I'm just thinking, like, what are we? Like, so this like <laughs> celebration was going to be the next day, and I'm thinking, these these co- like it was just an extended day of geeking out. Sure. I can't like, imagine. Walk, walking around, you know, guys in X-Wing pilots and, you know, uh, Rebel Trooper. Sure. Like the, the ground. Uh, it was just, yeah, it was amazing. It's like, I, it was, I can't it was amazing. even imagine. It's like your celebration started early, but like yeah, so much more but, because you're you're in it. That's well, like shooting of it. Yeah, it was crazy. Dude, Dude, how long was the shooting? Because I've done a lot of acting and like I've done extra work it, in principle, but. Not Star Wars. Yeah, it, it, it was it was eleven uh, eleven hours, eleven and a half hours. It, was it all in that meeting room? Like it was all the same scene that you did? All yeah yeah, but you know they they would switch the camera around. Right yeah of course gotta get coverage and all. Yeah, that. different angles, different cameras, different angles. But yeah, it was that scene, scene just over and over again. Sure. And if you can't talk about something, just let me know, and that's okay. But yeah. how different well, was the scene that you filmed versus the one that was in the movie? Uh, <laughs> you don't have to say specifically. <laughs> I well, right. So here's the thing. Mm-hmm. I when when 
Mark Newbold asked me to be on Radio 1138, right. like the Jedi News podcast. Right. As I reached out to Chris, that Chrissy, mm -hmm. uh, the Lucasfilm PR, to say, like, is this cool? Sure. Like, can I talk about it sort of thing? Right. Um, and he was like, well, you can you can talk about your journey. Right. But you can't you can't talk about like set specifics. Sure. That makes sense. That makes so, sense. So so I I need to honor that. Of course. I totally understand. So, uh, I can't really Sure. <laughs> like I can't really get into that. Sure. You know what I mean? No, I absolutely respect that. Um I yeah. <laughs> That is cool. Sorry, so, man. If, Sorry. No, absolutely. I totally get it. And Star Wars, I mean, I can't even imagine what the NDAs are like for that. Um, can you answer this one? Was <laughs> was Admiral Radice's dialogue said on set? Because Stephen Stanton did the voice and Paul Casey was inside. Yeah, uh, it, it, it was. Okay. Cause that's that's a big question I always have because I'm, I'm really into the technical stuff as well. Okay, it, it, okay so it was, but... It wasn't Paul Casey saying it. Okay, gotcha. That was like a script it, supervisor. It was. Oh, in fact, I just met him actually. He was. Oh, what's the guy's name? So a, the week after Celebration in Orlando, mm -hmm. there was another convention in the UK at Burnley Football Club. Oh, cool. Uh, Taylor Gray was over. Oh, like, right. He was. On. He was the. He, he was a big name. He loved it. Like. Sure. Yeah, yeah he, he had so much fun. Um, but the actor. So it was it was someone else doing the dialogue. Okay. So at one point it, it took so like the the person who was doing the dialogue right obviously couldn't be in shot, so he was elsewhere. So okay, I think I can say that. So like <laughs> you you were hearing the dialogue but you had to look you, you were hearing the dialogue from like 20 yards in an opposite direction right but you had to look and react to radis if you know what i mean yeah absolutely so you're you're looking and you're looking one way but you're hearing it from elsewhere gotcha. and i think that sort of caught a few people out to begin with sure you know pe you know as soon as you it's just natural reactions you know it's human instinct when you hear noise you sort of look at that person you know sure. but it, yeah that's so cool. I'm so like, yeah, the, the 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 dialogue was said. Gotcha. See, I always wonder that, especially when you have a character like Radis, where there's a different guy in the suit and a different guy doing the voice. So I'm like, yeah. oh, what's there, and how how exactly does that work? Because when you're on set, I mean, everything's it's so different, and you're doing yeah. it a bunch over, and it's just it's so cool. And you were in like the scene, like the the emotional center of the scene, where you're like, it's time to do this. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. Had you acted or done anything like that before? I I had only been on set. Okay. Um I had only been on set once before that. Okay. Um that was for Kick-Ass 2. Oh, what? Have, have you seen the Kick-Ass oh, movies? Oh, yeah. Kick-Ass 2 is great. Right. Right. So, I won my way onto that. <laughs> Whatever gets you there, I, man. <laughs> I I I was following you know like Mark Miller. Yes. Or Mark Millar. As you guys call him, yeah. <laughs> like, but over here he's just like, yeah, Mark Miller. Right. So I was follow, following him on Twitter. Like, I'm a big fan of his comics. I love his writing. Love his books. Right. And I loved, I loved the first Kick-Ass movie. Same. So, production had started in Toronto on Kick-Ass too. Mm -hmm. So Mark was like, oh, give uh, Jeff Wadlow was the director. He's like, oh, if you give, like, he basically gave him a shout out on Twitter saying that he was going to be posting pictures each day from set in Toronto so I was like okay follow Jeff sure and I was off I was off door and I'd come on shift so instead of you know like checking your feeds I just went straight to Jeff's Twitter page sure and his last tweet was uh, he was replying to a fan who had asked him if he was needing extras for the final scene like the you know like the big yeah. goodies versus baddies end battle sure and he, so Jeff had actually replied to him saying, yes, if you want to be involved, send an email to this address. So I was like, huh, I'm going to jump in on that. Yeah. Sent away an email um, of me wearing a Stormtrooper outfit, like a bucket off Stormtrooper outfit. Sure. Um, 
couple of hours later, I got a reply saying, right, well, there's myself and like another 16 people. Perfect. Right, you, hey, thanks for replying via Jeff's Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, we now want you to design your own costume. Bright colors, bright colors for the bad guys, dark colors for the baddies. Right. So I, I, re, I reread the book, picked two background characters, mashed them, went on eBay, and bought, you know, like biker boots. Sure. That is genius. G- goth, you know, sort of a dark, goth, grungy, punk. Yeah. Like jeans and jeans and jacket sort of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, with like spikes and buckles and chains and yeah. stuff like hanging off it. Of course. Ba- balaclava. And you know, like a, a mountain bike mask, you know, like a, yes. a dust mask. Mm-hmm. Like a skull version of one of them. Put oh. that on. Posed for a picture with like my E11 uh, and sent it away. Got an email back saying, right, uh, we've chosen you. Wow. Can you come down? Can you come down to Pinewood and do three days of filming as a baddie? So I'm like, absolutely. Thank you very much. Turned up to Pinewood uh, for check-in, and he was like, "Oh, Paul, oh, awesome. Uh, can I have a word?" You know, this was there's was maybe about a dozen people there. Right. So, he was, oh, uh, there's been a change. Can I have a word with you in private? I was like, and, you know, at that point, in my heart, I'm thinking, oh, sure. Like, oh, their see mind. you, Paul. Like, yeah, bye bye. Thanks a lot, but see you. Right. And he was like, um, can you do ten days filming? Like, can you do two weeks as a goodie? <laughs> I'm Dude. Like, uh, yes, I can. That would be <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. Right. Like, okay, on you go. Go in there, get measured up. They'll make your costume up. So I was like, right, okay. Wow. So in, so that was on the Thursday. So I went in the following day for, it was like a boot camp. Mm-hmm. Um, getting taught how to fight on screen. What? Um there was about 50 of us 50 or 60 of us like divided into groups we got partnered up sure um and it was the guy okay so the guy who was doing all the teaching uh sterling or what's his, is it matthew sterling that does sound very familiar matthew is it matthew he was in rogue one anyway oh okay big guy big guy bald head like he like when Cassian brings in a load of like ground rebel troopers to say, you know, like, you know, we're gonna help you Jen, like we're gonna do it. Yes. Like he he was in that shot. Oh, right on. Okay. Had Matthew I'm not sure if that's right. Definitely Sterling, but I can't remember his first name. So anyway, um so he was there along with the guy who stood in for Christian Bale is the Dark Knight. Oh what? And 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 the guy who stood in for Chris Evans is Captain America. Wow. So Captain America and Batman taught me how to yeah. fight. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. That's, so, yeah, that end battle where, the, like, the doors open and the good guys walk in. Sure. Uh, yeah, I was kind of stood behind Clark Duke and Donald Faison wearing a morph suit, a red cape. Uh, I had a boxing glove and a taser. I had a boxing glove <laughs> and a taser. That was my weapons. Amazing. That is so cool that your first production you work on, you get to learn to fight from Batman. So, yeah, yeah. Because that's, like, one of the hidden benefits of, like, being an actor is when you get to learn all these, like, new skills as part of the role. So much fun. And because I'm, like, wearing a morph suit, I remember Clark Duke turned around and said to me, oh, you know, it sucks to be wearing that. Like, you can't <laughs> see your face. Your friends won't believe you that it's you. Right. And I'm like, dude, I'll don't really care like i know that it's me and right. i'm here having fun like i don't really care about getting my face on camera if you know what i mean sure and then but yeah a bit later you are in star wars <laughs> well yeah in fact that was round about the time where detours had been announced oh my but god it had, but but it hadn't been cancelled yet right because i was sort of got talking to donald saying you know like big star wars fan really looking forward to it yeah uh, so yeah, had fun, had fun with those guys. And you got to talk to and, them. Yeah, well, yeah, That's they awesome. they were cool. There's again Donald and Clark. Like Clark is a massive, massive comic book fan. Donald, obviously, he's a massive Star Wars fan. Oh, so yeah. 
you know, um, and because I was like stood one yard behind them, you know, you're obviously you. Yeah, for hours. It kind of seems it kind of seems silly not to talk to them, like sure. if you know what I mean. So you know, sure. again, if if you've got Star Wars in common, you sort of you know. Exactly, it's good. It's, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice breaker, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And now you're in it. Yeah. So, but that was on on the last day. So yeah, on the last day of filming mm-hmm. was, well, the last day of filming when I was there on set. Right. That was that was the day Disney bought Lucasfilm. Really. And at that point, I'm thinking, I can do that. Like. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, you know, obviously I'd won my way onto set, sure. but once you've got that experience, sure, of you know, shooting a movie at Pinewood, blah blah blah, Absolutely. it was like, right, I'm going to sign up with different casting agencies, and so yeah, when when it was announced that they were going to be shooting in Pinewood, that's when I kind of got my finger out and and sure. tried to source, yeah, <laughs> so tried to find, like you know, like you sort of. Look on Facebook. You check your Twitters. Oh yeah. You do it. You you do anything you can to find out who's what agency is is casting extras. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That's the um, that was the big thing behind me getting into acting because I've done a couple movies now where I was principal, commercials, all that stuff, and it's all to try and build up experience to be like, oh hey, Star Wars. And now that Disney owns them, it's yeah. a perpetual thing. It's yeah. so cool. That's why I think it's so great what you did because that's what I'm trying to do. And it's like from well, an outsider in. You, well, you know who got me in it now, don't you? So yeah. it's, I mean, obviously there's there's a lot of luck involved. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean. As with anything. The, the, the way I'm looking at the Rogue One was, it was a reshoot. Sure. So there was obviously someone in that costume before me. Right. Possibly, if you know what I mean. Right. And maybe he couldn't have made that day maybe he was committed to another project sure and it was just luck that he couldn't well luck from my point of view anyway luck that he wasn't able to do it sure luck that luck that we were the same height and build and that i could fit that costume and you know then there's obviously the luck of production of course picking you because you know I'm, i'm sure i wouldn't have been the only person to reply yes i'm available right so yeah, there's there's a lot of luck involved. For sure, I'm glad it worked out for you. But you know, you, you've got to do everything you can to put yourself in that position. Absolutely. Do everything. And how did you get involved with Jedi News? Because they're great, and now you're the North Sea correspondent, which is North the sea. coolest <laughs> title ever. <laughs> I mean, obviously, um, it was. Fact, when was it? It was so. I, think i've never actually asked them why yeah <laughs> but, I, but but i think it was like you know we, we all sort of follow each other on twitter follow each other on facebook yeah and stuff. of course um and i think it was after i went to skellig michael i was posting like you know i sort of created an album on facebook and i was adding pictures of the journey oh yeah and putting putting little captions along with each picture so I took my, my little, my Sphero BB-8 and my three and three quarter inch Ray. So I was taking, you know, like toy pictures oh, on location, like doing all that sort of stuff. And I think they liked that. Sure. And, and you know, we'd, we'd been to so many conventions and bumped into each other there, you know, at London right. and at Celebration, you know, the, the, the London conventions and the Celebrations. So right. they knew me. In fact, I think it was the bad robot costume. I think that's how Mark first spoke to me about the yeah. So like the bad robot costume sort of put me on their radar, if right. you know what I mean. Um, and then after I went to Skellig Michael, they sort of realised, you know, I'd been to Star Wars weekends a few times, mm-hmm. um, where I don't think those guys had. Right. So. And, you know, it's just like I, I go to the, I was at the Force Awakens art show at Gallery 88. Oh, cool. So, you know, I was I was over in Los Angeles. I was doing a lot of traveling to Los, back and forth to Los Angeles at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think they just thought, yeah, here's a guy who goes to Star Wars stuff, likes geeking yeah. out. <laughs> sure. let's, let's, let's bring him on board. He's one of us. Yeah. That's I awesome. think that was, yeah, I think that was it, really. 
And I have to ask, you saw John Boyega's new play. Yes. And you met oh, John Boyega. Dude. Tell me about yeah. that. <laughs> How the was the play? play? Is, the play is amazing. Uh, like, it's it's a John Boyega I've not seen before. Really? Like, the performance was so raw. Oh, man. So powerful. Like, so it's kind of divided into two. Like, do you know what the play's about? I do not. Okay, so it's uh, Wojcik. So it's mm-hmm. it's set in it's set in the eighties. Okay. He's a he's a soldier, British soldier, who's based in Berlin. So it's a kind of Cold War mm-hmm. vibe, paranoia vibe. Right. Um. So he plays. Yeah. So. His character uh, is in a relationship with a girl from Ireland, and they've got a baby, and they're short of money. Mm-hmm. So, as a way of making extra money, he signs up. He goes to see a doctor, and signs up for like a medical experiment, medical trials, where it's like this pill. Okay. So, he takes this pill like so many times a day um so the so it's very dark like right. uh, so john Boyega has a friend who's also in the army and yeah so there's there's nudity okay. there's dark there's dark humor mm-hmm. at both ge- both genders i should say of course. get naked get naked at one point right um so yeah so it's it's basically his spiral so it, the the first act it's kind of more comedic. Right. It's a bit lighter. And then in the second half, the second act, that's where the drugs kick in and he starts spiraling out of control. Wow. Where he, it's, so it's, it's, it's a, a story of him losing his mind, essentially. And he's such a phenomenal actor. He, oh, it's so good. Did you ever see... Like, uh, if, uh, Attack the block with him in it. Yeah, he's so yeah. good in everything. Yeah, I mean, to, to be honest, that's the only thing I've seen him in. Attack the block. Sure. Oh no, tell like he he did that other Netflix thing as well, didn't he? Yep. Set set in Los Angeles. And then he's got Detroit coming out uh, very soon as well. Yeah. And so I can't imagine him on stage. Which so is... yeah, out yeah out of the three movies, it was a performance that I hadn't seen him do on camera before. Sure. And to see it live was just unbelievable man and you met him afterwards yeah well well, i mean this this sort of sh- so at the end of the play obviously i think he you know as the audience i'd heard rumors i'd seen a couple of posts on instagram mm-hmm. of him taking selfies with people outside so i knew it was a possibility sure but you never know you know if, if he's if he's got another commitment if he needs to go somewhere sure you know he's tired. so yeah absolutely so you sort of take a gamble, stood. Uh, so I went with Matt, Matt from Jedi News as well. So mm-hmm. we stood at the stage door, and there was maybe about 30, 40 people there. So the other the other cast members came out, pictures, selfies, whatever you want. Mm-hmm. And then a car rolls up, and jo- so it, all the rest of the actors are coming out the stage door. Right. And then a and then a car rolls up, and John gets out the car. So he'd obviously been somewhere else. Right. Like, so what I was thinking was, you know, once the play's finished, he's just gone straight out the door, like sure. before the audience has a chance to get out the theater. Right. And he's jumped in a car, gone to another building, had a shower, got changed, and then got in the car and come back to the theater to meet the fans. Oh, it's so cool. How awesome is that? That is so cool. And performances like that, I mean, that takes a lot out of you. And right, he just seems I mean, like such a cool dude. I, I think that says a lot about him. You sure, know, he's, you know, he could have just went a bit, stayed at home, turned on his PlayStation, and just chilled out. Sure, like you, like you know what I mean. Sure, but but to actually come back and meet the fans, I thought that was absolutely awesome of him. And he got to meet him. So he was, uh, yeah, I mean, he was there. I think it was his agent or he, or his or one of his friends anyway. Mm-hmm. Um. And he, so he went along the line first, saying, "Right, if you want an autograph, get your pen ready. If you want a picture, get your camera ready. Right. And, you know, let's form form a line, and John will come along and he'll meet every one of you." 
and he was so cool. So I had my BB-8 track, like the Think Geek BB-8 track suit top on. Yeah. Which I don't think he'd seen before. Um, and he, yeah, he liked it. So. Such good stories. He's he's a good dude. He's a good dude. He's one I really want to meet. I was so excited when he got cast in Star Wars because I loved Attack the Block so much. And I was like, right. that guy's going to be in Star Wars? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's fit. Like, I, I, again, he gets it. Like, he's a fan. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? So... He he understands. Absolutely, there's that famous clip of him bringing like a Han Solo in stormtrooper armor to Harrison. <laughs> <Right. and Hudson. laughs> Just sign exactly. It. <laughs> like I I can't imagine what I mean. Okay, so you're an extra in Rogue One for a day, which was awesome. Sure. But can you imagine being John Boyega? Oh my God! No way. <laughs> <laughs> like, can you imagine being in those shoes? That that is crazy. For real, that's like a your world goes completely different, uh, and I'm glad people like him are like at the forefront of it. You know, as opposed yeah. to some actors are like kind of over it. It's a job, and he like yeah, yeah. relishes in it and he loves it. It's no, I think that's super it. cool. Yeah. Well, I have taken up well over an hour of your time. It's been great. Oh, was it? Was that an hour? It's been over <laughs> an hour. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I hope you've had a good time. Cool. cool. It's been a good chat. Like, yeah, I nice like, talk to you, man. Thanks. Oh, I mean, thank, thanks for asking. Of course. Of course. Thanks for responding. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I love Anytime. this kind of stuff, just meeting people and just talking. It's cool, you know? Yeah, man. And, Absolutely. And like you said, Star Wars is like a perfect middle ground. So where where can people find you online? Uh, Twitter. And, uh, Twitter. Uh, Paul. Well, hang on. Let me get this right. Yeah. Paul <laughs> underscore MCQ. Paul McQ. Perfect. And on Instagram, the underscore is a dot, paul.mcq. Right on. And definitely go follow him. And and, uh, and Facebook as well, I don't know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, just Paul McHugh. Uh, I think my profile picture's the BB-8 kilt at the moment, I think. Perfect. You'll know. You'll know by the BB-8 it's Skellig- kilt. Yeah, Skell- <laughs> yeah B- I was going to say the BB-8 kilt stood beside on Skellig Michael, but... I, no one else has got a BB-8 kilt, so yeah, it's yeah. just a BB-8 <laughs> kilt. It's, it's me. Yeah, <laughs> you've cornered the market. But awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, no worries, man. Thank you.